Now let me tell you my problem. The main problem with Kubernetes right now. Hello there and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new to my channel, it's great to have you here. My name is Anais and I make videos related to Kubernetes and the cloud native ecosystem. Now, in my previous video, I talked about getting started with Terraform and kind of getting back into Terraform, getting used to it again and finding my way around and how to actually deploy resources. Now, in response to my video, I got lots of suggestions and also some questions related that, to that project. So in this video, I want to share an updated version of the project. Um, some of the components I have showed you in the previous video, but this is really an elaboration, <laughs> elaboration of the previous video and building upon the resources within expanding upon it. So if you are new to Terraform, I suggest you watching my previous video before you watch this video. In this video, I'm going to showcase how you can connect through a cloud provider in Terraform to your cloud account and then set up resources such as a Kubernetes cluster in that cloud account. And then we're going to deploy the Argo CD Helm chart and deploy applications through Argo CD. So here's my project directory and in this directory I have first of all the readme with the step-by-step -step instructions. So if you prefer a step-by-step -step written guide, it's linked below in the description section, the link to this Git repository with the written guide. Then I have two different uh, repositories, one for infrastructure and one for application. And in the infrastructure repository I have my provider.tf file and the provider.tf file is specifying my DigitalOcean provider. Now, here's a DigitalOcean provider with the information passed into the provider. I've pretty much copy pasted that from online resources. And then I'm passing into the provider my token, my var.digitalocean token. Now, every time you have a var.name file, or like referenced, it's specifying a variable. In this case, my digital oak token variable that I have saved here in my terraform.tf virus file. Now don't try using this uh, token because I have deleted it after this video. Now this is passed into the provider and it needs the provider needs it to access through the DigitalOcean API to access my account and my resources. Now I also have an output section and the output section is basically specifying that once the, um, the resources have been created I need the cluster ID and I need the cluster name. And both of those are needed then for my Terraform application, application file. So then I have my Terraform app repository directory with my application installation. In this case, I only want to install Argo CD because everything else in my cluster I then want to manage through Argo CD through GitOps best practices. Now in this folder, otherwise I have my variables file. I have a few more variables in this case. Um, and then I have my terraform.tf voice file where I define my variables, where I pass in the token, cluster ID and cluster name. Now these will change depending on me actually, like once I've completed install installing the cluster, I will get these two from the cluster ID and the cluster name from the outputs over here, right? So they will be passed, I will pass them into here. I didn't automate the passing yet, that's like for our next video. Let me know suggestions in the comments. If you're familiar with Terraform and you have suggestions, that would be really handy. So I have my provider with the different provider information. So I connect basically to Kubernetes, to DigitalOcean and to Helm. And here is just my DigitalOcean, my cluster, cluster name, um, and my token passed in. And that's about it. It's very straightforward. I hope it's working because I made some changes. So I might have to re-record the section or um, there might be some changes in the repository. Anyway, then I have two resources for Argo CD that I'm going to provide Argo CD that I'm going to apply to the Argo CD namespace once the Terraform app has been deployed. And it's first the application for my Trivia operator that I want to install. And then it's my, actually my app, my um website that I want to install as well, but managed for Argo CD. And once we have a terminal, we can then move into the Terraform info repository and we can do a Terraform init. And this is again initializing the backend with everything within the provider and so on. Nice success message. And then we can do a Terraform 
apply. I would do a Terraform plan before, but there's really only one resource, which is the cluster, which doesn't make much sense to me to do a plan beforehand because the apply will allow me to verify it and there's really not much that we're doing here. So in this case, it's adding one resource, which is my cluster. That looks correct to me. So we can go ahead and type yes. And it's going to try to create my digital ocean Kubernetes cluster in here. So we're just going to wait to drink coffee while that's going to deploy. Somebody in the comment section of my previous video recommended to um, do exactly that, to use Argo CD and just install Argo CD in your cluster and then manage everything else through Argo CD versus um, through Terraform, which is what I want to do. But the thing is, I wanted to install it originally through one Terraform module. Now Terraform module is basically, this is a Terraform module and this is a Terraform module, as far as I understand. The thing is, it's difficult to install the cluster and then have um, the same module use the resources from the cluster creation because the provider needs ultimately the resources from the cluster creation, right? Um, but it can't really have that because the cluster doesn't exist yet if both is in the same module. And I found one discussion related to that on Reddit actually, uh, in the Terraform subreddit. And it's basically describing like hacker rounds to have both in the same module, but it doesn't seem worth doing. So if you have a better solution, then please do let me know in the comments. This thread is also linked below in this um, video in the description. So do check that out. Um, if you're curious, but yeah, if you know a way of installing Helm and the class in the same module, then do let me know. It just didn't seem worth it for based on the discussion and based on what I tried out. Um, so this is why I end up with two modules, one for the cluster and one for the, um, for the Argo City Helm chart as well. Now, as you can see, the cluster creation takes several minutes. It takes about five minutes. So that's why I will update you multiple times. Um, on the state of the creation, you can expect, depending on which cloud provider you use, a, like a few minutes to half an hour. <laughs> if you're using AWS, you likely have to um, wait about 25 minutes or something like that. So be mindful of that. So we have created our DigitalOcean Kubernetes cluster. And here is the cluster ID. And then the name is demo because we defined the name. And now we can pass in into the terraform.tfr file. We can pass on the cluster ID from our outputs, from the installation of the cluster. And then the name is demo. And now we can go into our terraform.app file, cd terraform.app. And we can do a terraform in it as well in here. like this and we can do a terraform in it again and now it's initializing so if you have a string put them in quotes that's what we learned from it now we have our dot terraform file with the provider information and our log file um we've also provided it's all just for me provider information um that's managing the state of my cluster of my resources so we do a terraform plan in this case, because I want to plan first. Now we have here the state from our current plan and it's evaluating what's going to happen. It's going to add two resources, which is correct. I want to add the namespace and then Argo CD in this case. So I'm going to do a Terraform apply and see if that's going to work. Uh, because I changed again, I changed a lot of things around here, so I can't 100% say it's working but yeah it seems to be working so it's creating the Argo CD um, home chart right now once it's created we also should get like a cube config file that allows us to connect to the cluster and then use Argo CD um, and provide it with resources now let's talk a little bit about in, in the meantime about why am I doing this well first of all I want to define all of my resources as code as infrastructure infrastructure as code, right? Um, <laughs> so basically, if I define my cluster here, people know what cluster I'm using and its rep 
replicable, replicatable, replicatable across versions. And it's easy to, to follow what's happening. Like if I'm working with a team, that's great. Additionally, I can scan the resources for security issues if they are defined as code. So for example, I could do trivi, trivi config, and I can scan my app names, bit, my Terraform, well, in this, I'm already in this directory. I can scan the current directory for misconfiguration issues. Now, as you can see, the Terraform app does not seem to have any misconfiguration issues, which is great. Um, <laughs> now, I could do the same in the here in the infrastructure file. I could scan it for misconfiguration issues and then I can prove it. If I don't have that, if I'm just clicking buttons, in a cloud provider, it's much more difficult to find misconfiguration issues. Trivi has a AWS scanner, a cloud account scanner, and we're adding more different cloud providers in the future. But for now, it does not um, have it for, for example, DigitalOcean. So I can't have a misconfiguration scanner for my DigitalOcean account, but I can scan my Terraform resource for misconfiguration issues, which is a deal, deal breaker? No, deal enhancer for using Terraform, for example. Now, other people have told me to use other types of, to use, for example, cluster API to provision Kubernetes cluster instead of Terraform. Now, let me tell you my problem. The main problem with Kubernetes right now is that you have, and let me make me big for that. So the main problem with Kubernetes right now is that you have so many different applications, right? You have so many different applications in the cloud native ecosystem. And most of them, including the Trivi operator, for example, they have lots of custom resource definitions that they install inside of your cluster to make the application work, right? So they are enhancing um, the Kubernetes default API with their own resources to make them work, which is amazing. The problem is that those um, custom resources cannot be it cannot be integrated or um, used by other applications a lot of times. For example, security scanners right now, they have a problem to scan custom resource definitions, like the Kubernetes custom resource definitions directly or different ways in which they are installed. So you have to, for example, define applications for Terraform to expose them in a way that they can be installed. Now, if I use a tool such as, for example, Crossplane, and I define resources through Crossplane, right? If I define my Kubernetes cluster through Crossplane, misconfiguration scanners such as Trivi cannot scan those yet because those are custom resources specific to Crossplane. And that's why I'm a bit wary of using lots of these, you know, these are great tools. I'm not saying that at scale, and if you know what you're doing, um, and you invest lots of, time setting up and like resources and skills into setting up something like cross plane or cluster API, right? Then be my guest, go for it, use them, right? They are amazing tools and cross plane has seen so much adoption throughout the past year. In the past KubeCon, every second talk it seemed to me that I was listening to mentioned cross plane. However, those resources cannot be scanned by security scanners right now for misconfiguration issues. So if you if you define your infrastructure through Crossplane, you have to know what you're doing to make it secure, if that makes sense. So that's my take right now on using like some of these cutting edge tools to define your infrastructure, because different to, inf to Terraform, for example, the their resources cannot be scanned yet by security scanners. I'm going to post this part as a separate video of like, what's wrong with the cloud native ecosystem? Ooh. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, let's go back to my example. Yeah. Okay. We're back from our little rant break. This keeps it entertained, doesn't it? Um, so do I have my cube config here? No, I don't have a cube config. So okay. So I'm here in my DigitalOcean account, and if I go to Kubernetes, I have here my demo cluster that was created 15 minutes ago, and I want to connect to it. Now, it should have saved the cube config, but it didn't because I messed things up when I changed things around, so I'm going to fix that and then, then share it in the updated version below in the description. Um, no, I can connect to my cluster through the DigitalOcean command and I can get all the nodes. 
And here are all my notes. And now I can open my cluster in K9S because we love K9S. And as you can see, I have Argo CD running and I have not my trivia operator running yet. So let's apply the resources in Argo CD. Now I have other videos linked up there on Argo CD. So do check those videos out if you're curious. Again, if you're curious, check those out. Um, <laughs> and then I have here, uh, basically I've set them up as applications, both of them, they're both application resources and they link to the resource, whether the, the Helm chart or the repository where the Helm chart lives in this case. And I can go ahead and I say kubectl apply file um, Argo CD. And it should apply both of these um, resources. Now they're both creating a namespace, an application namespace, here an app namespace, and then here the trivia system namespace, and here the um, values defined for trivia operator and also the namespace, trivia system. So I can go ahead and install it, just after making sure that everything is correct, what I want to install. And again, the thing is with something like Argo City, right? These are fairly simple resources, right? Um, and the way they are installed. And you can basically look up Argo City best practices. You can use their templates. Um, I mean, to some extent, you have to trust them that the templates they showcase on their documentation are correct. And then you just replace the values with your own, right? But if you have something like more complex infrastructure resources that you want to set up, more ex extensive resources that you want to set up, right? And you can't scan them for misconfiguration issues. And that's a problem. For example, here Argo CD, I can't scan that with Trivi config. And then I do Argo CD. It's detecting files, but it can't scan them. Like it's, it knows that those are Kubernetes YAML files, right? It knows that, but it doesn't know that specific, like it can't check that specific version for misconfiguration issues because the way that misconfiguration issues work, right, or misconfiguration scanners work is that they have a list of uh, configurations that can easily go wrong. For example, using the latest tag in your Docker file. So it's checking your Docker file and it's checking, is there the latest tag used? Yes or no. If it's used, yes, then that's a misconfiguration. If it's not used, then that's not a misconfiguration. And it goes basically misconfiguration issues. Uh, scanners go through a list of misconfigurations that they have and then compare the, um, the list that they have with what they find in the files that they can scan. But with, in the case of Argo CD, it cannot do that because it doesn't have, um, it doesn't have like a right or wrong understanding of like, is this configured correctly? Yes or no. It doesn't know that, right? Um, so that's why it can't show you misconfigurations for Argo CD. As always, I really hope this video was useful. If you have any comments, suggestions, questions, please do post them below. Again, all of the resources linked to the tutorial, written tutorial, everything is linked below in the description. Do check that out. Do create a PR if you have any suggestions for ways to improve the project. It would be very helpful. It would mean a lot to me and to the community, I assume. Now, it would also mean a lot to me if you found this video useful and you give it a thumbs up and a yay and subscribe to my channel for upcoming videos. I really hope to see one of my next videos. Have an amazing week. Bye bye.